up, you guys? Slim here, Team Symmetry. Um, I have done it, you guys. I have fit, uh, hit the pinnacle of 5,000 subscribers. Actually, over 5,000 now, and I can't thank you guys enough. Y'all have been with me here for almost a year uh, since day one, and you guys have just stuck with me through all the videos I've made, all the content I've brought to you, all the events I've gone to, and we've reached a pinnacle of over 5,000 subscribers in less than a year. My one-year anniversary is going to be this Monday. I will be having a special video for that, kind of reflecting back on everything we've been through together, but I'm here to do what I promised you guys. I'm here to finally reveal my September 1st, 2012 first build of Dino Rabbit. The deck has tested very, very well. Uh, I've lost very few matches. I've barely lost any matches, to be honest. I've always gone to Game 3 if I couldn't draw the Rabbit Game 2 and didn't really care if I lost Game 2 because going first Game 3 gave me an advantage over my opponent for if I drew the Rabbit and they didn't have the Veiler, I'd have a turn 1 Logia for them to answer. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the deck has lost some speed due to that there's only two rabbit two tour guide but i feel that the text that we've put into this deck make it an excellent contender at any major event any local anything that you go to uh, i still think dino rabbit is very much alive i don't want to listen to what people say saying that the deck sucks or the deck is dead until you play tested it until you have made all the changes you can you will never truly know so i'm going to get into the profile i want to thank a couple of my friends for all your help helping me build this deck. We spent several days on this deck to make sure that we got all the text just right, and uh, it came out pretty well. So I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time. Thank you once again for the 5,000 subs, and we're just going to get into the main deck right now. Of course, we got to be on the Nats mat. I won't have it any other way, but let's get into it. First things first, two Rescue Rabbit. They were the Three Stooges. They are now the dynamic duo. Um... Rabbit is to two, so you have to run two. I don't need to explain how good this card is. We also can only run two tour guide. Now, um, since we've lost a tour guide, we've lost a little bit of speed. Same with the rabbit. Now, the question is, how do you make up for not having the third tour guide? Well, tour guide already comes so, uh, equipped with Sangin. Sangin uh, is always included with tour guides. The, we've added a new monster into the fray, though, with the tour guides and Sangin, and that card is, yes, Night Assailant. I've been talking about how good Night Assailant is in this deck, and this card is superior to Torbus in every way. The reason is, the number one reason, is that this is not a dead draw compared to Tor Bus. I've had many situations where I will top deck the Tor Bus, not be able to do anything, set it, and even if its effect goes off, it serves me no purpose. I've net, uh, netted no plus. Night Assailant, on the other hand, you can top deck it, and you can set it, and it's like a Snowman Eater. Uh, it's like a Raikou. It gets rid of a pesky monster, whether it's face up or face down, so this card is excellent. I think this card is uh, definitely the best contender to add in with the two Tour Guide and Sangin engine. So this is the new Tour Guide engine for Dino Rabbit, uh, the way that I run it. Uh, next, for the monsters, we are not running Jurek Guaiba. We're not running Guaiba because I felt that Guaiba is not a good call right now with all the heroes, Dark World, and big monster decks running around. Guaiba is going to have a very hard time getting around monsters, even with Forbidden Lance. So I felt that we needed to put monsters in the deck that could do multiple things at, at a time and could really just lock down the opponent. I've always believed that Dino Rabbit has always had a stun factor to it. It's a very stun-based deck. So I feel that cards that are stun-based should be in the deck. So for that reason, we started with two Thunder King Ryo. TK Ryo was in my Nationals deck. I never regretted running this card because... It was better than Guaiba for the sense that it could get over it. Granted, if they had the Lance, you would take a minus. Now, the beauty of this card, though, is that it locks down a lot of plays. It locks down special summons. It locks down adding cards to hand. It locks down pot of duality. It locks down a lot of cards. And a 1900 monster is nothing to laugh at. Thunder King has always been an amazing card. And I feel that the format has come again for him to rise up as one of the best main deck, if not side deck, cards. So Thunder King was definitely a must for the Dino Rabbit deck this time around. Uh, continuing with the stun factor, we decided to add in two main deck snowman eater. 
a lot of people are going to be like, wow, really? Snowman Eater is amazing for the fact that it's good against heroes, it's good against most decks, and it's excellent in the Dino Rabbit Mirror because Lagia cannot negate this. If they go Dolka, they go Dolka. But if they go Lagia, which most players do, you walk into a Snowman Eater, boom, it's gone. This card is amazing. Simon He main two of these in his Dino Rabbit deck at YCS Long Beach, and that's what got him all the way up to second place. So I feel that this card is just amazing. Plus, this card happens to be a level three. So so that if you are out of possibilities, I've had many situations where I'll some I'll have this set summon tour guide. They veil the tour guide. I have a. Uh useless tour guide i'll flip this pop one of their monsters if they have a monster and then proceed to xyz summon into levier back into my rabbit play so this card has a lot of good versatility and just is amazing with a 1900 defense so this was one of the new tech cards in the deck next we only run two effect veiler we're only running two because insectors are on hiatus as of now so i feel that two is just enough they're light targets they take care of problems you only use them when you need them Good against a lot of matches, good against Tour Guide, good against the Mirror Match, but I feel two is enough. Three could get a little cloggy, and without bugs coming back every single turn to pop something, I think two is just fine. Of course, we have the obligatory copies of three Sabersaurus, and of course, the best card in the deck, three Caboozles. Uh, these cards are self-explanatory. You have to run them with Dino Rabbit. My favorite card of the deck, and probably the best monster in the deck, Neospatian Grand Mole. People who follow me on Facebook know that I talked about how great Grand Mole is. Grand Mole really is amazing. This card can single-handedly win games. The way that this card wins games is if you have a face-up Lagia or Dolka and you summon this bad boy, you're able to get rid of their pesky monster and just keep hitting them directly for game. So this card single-handedly can win the game. You play the Grand Mole game and the opponent just becomes frustrated and eventually loses because if they don't have the Veiler, they don't have the Warning, they don't have a way of stopping Neospatian Grand Mole, you're in the clear. This card just amazing and I highly suggest you all main deck it in your Dino Rabbit deck because you will not regret it. This little card is beyond amazing. Far superior to most of the cards in this deck and I think single handedly is what has won me probably about 10 of my games. It was Grand Mole alone so definitely try out Grand Mole. Um, we run a Gores because it's Gores, it's big, it punishes bad players who overextend and it's able to. you're able to counter punch a usually impossible situation with Gores so that's why we main Gores. And the last monster is a BLS. I do run BLS. I have four light targets. I have extra uh, lights that come in the form of XYZs. This card has never been dead to me. I like having this extra out, this chaos monster, which is the, like the best card in the game. And it's able to get around those pesky monsters because it's able to remove or double attack for games. So this card was, uh, was, a, was a needed card for, uh, for the main deck. That's it for the monsters. It's 21 monsters. They all serve a purpose. The techs came through Night Assailant, Thunder King Ryo, and Snowman Eater, so I think they're really good. On to the spells. We run, of course, 3 MST. We're still running 3 space so that we can get rid of Pesky Back Row. Dino Rabbit wants to get their combos off. Pesky Back Row is the only thing in our way aside from Effect Veiler, so MSTs are just a must. We run just 2 Forbidden Lance. We're not running Gwaiba, so we only need 2. Um... When I ran Griba, I ran three. The one thing I noticed, though, is that sometimes I would draw this card later on and I wouldn't need it or it would just be dead, so I'd set it as a bluff, and honestly, it did not serve a purpose. So I felt two is just really good. You could up it to three if you want, but I feel two is just enough. Um, it's like run Also, it's like running five MSTs because this is, in a sense, another MST. Um, the Staples, Monster Born, Dark Hole, Heavy Storm. Pot of Avarice, Book of Moon. The only card I was considering adding back into the main deck was Mind Control. The thing is, is not knowing how many mirror matches I'm going to play, not knowing if I'm going to have the situation where I Mind Control Utopia and Utopia Ray. I didn't want to take a chance of having that card because I've had many times where I'll draw, I'll top deck that card and it's dead. A lot more dead than any of these other uh, stable spells. So these were uh, standard in pretty much every deck. So that's it for the spells. Very standard. Uh, into the traps, we run two bottomless. I talked about this in my Gravekeeper deck profile. Decks that run big monsters will get punished by this with the return of agents, TG agents, TGs in general. You need cards to get off the field and not only put them in the graveyard but banish them from the game. Bottomless does just that. I feel two bottomless is excellent. I would not not run bottomless. I feel that with Insectors on hiatus, this card has become a lot more live these days. Plus, with people still running dragons and big be beater monsters, bottomless puts in a lot of work. Same rules apply for two D-Prison. I'm still maining D-Prisons because, like I said, with bugs on hiatus, you don't have to worry about this getting popped. They MST it, they MST it, but aside from that, you can just get rid of pesky monsters. And with these four cards alone, you can uh, banish monsters uh, from the game. So I feel like you should be maining one, if not both, of these cards. Uh, the two warnings and the judgment, the solemn brigade, self-explanatory, they're good, you run them. I run one mirror force, I don't run two, I don't like two. 
I feel that one is just enough. This card is going to make a comeback. This format with bugs gone, this card is very live again. Punishes bad players who overextend and does not expected it may be expected a little more now but uh it's all the more reason to uh play your cards smart so the one is enough same with one torrential now people might question the one torrential a lot of good dino rabbit players and i have discussed this and the thing is is that you never want to torrential your own field usually you'll have a lagia or a dolka or you'll be in a winning position you never want to have to torrential your own field if you don't need to the times you torrential is when people overextend when you have the tour guide sang in play but that rarely comes up it rarely comes up that you'll torrential with a face up Sangan and search rabbit or search what you need but if that situation does come up you do have the one torrential and I feel one will suffice for now I could possibly see myself running two but I like just one uh, in this new format and then the last card is a starlight road he gave this card a bad rap last format. I take it back. This card has won me so many games because people are main decking two Torrential. They are now main decking two Mirror Force. Bottomless, uh, all those cards that can hurt my Dinos, hurt my Rabbit, hurt my uh, Laggy and Dolka. That's what this card is for. Heavy Storm is still a card. This card is just uh, amazing, hands down. Uh, I gave this card a bad rap, and I regret it. This card is fantastic. So that is the main deck. It's 41 cards. Let me know what you guys think. That's the first prototype of the deck. I'll just get to the uh, extra deck real quick. Um, it's pretty uh, standard. I don't think I added anything in here that isn't already in here, but this is just for people who aren't sure, who have not run Dino Rabbit yet. Uh, you have to have the two Lagia and the two Dolka, self-explanatory. They're broken. They've both been reprinted. Everyone should be able to run Dino Rabbit now. Uh, the Utopia and the Utopia Ray. This was the reason why I said I might add mind control to the main board, cut something for it. Um, I don't make Utopia a lot, but I have gone into situations where I've made Utopia. My life points have been at below 1,000, and I've gone to number uh, C39 Utopia Ray and gone for game with this card. So this card's really good. These are both really good in general. You never know what the situation may call for. Uh, for the rest of the rank fours, we run one May Stroke. The card's amazing. It's a Book of Moon. Uh, it can save itself. It, it's a great card. 2300 defense is also pretty damn impressive for a rank four. Um, one Gem Knight Pearl. This was the one card I wasn't too sold on. However, a 2600 base attack is kind of hard to argue with. Gets around a lot of pesky monsters. Um, good in the mirror match if you can make it and protect it. And it's just good against a lot of cards. So I feel that one Gem Knight Pearl is fine. Um, on to the rank threes. We run the obligatory Zen Mains. Best stall card in the game. Everyone has one now. So prepare for Zen Mains. Um, Leviathan. Uh, one Levier, one Acid Golem, one Temtempo. Now, Temtempo is amazing because now that everyone has Zen Mains, this card should be in everyone's extra deck who makes rank threes because this card gets around Zen Mains. I've killed many Zen Mains with this card, and I feel that this card will once again be one of the MVPs in most people's decks. So, Temtempo is great. And then, um, I forgot to add this in with the rank fours, but my favorite rank four is um, the Photon Butterfly Assassin. This card is great because um, Reapers... Uh, a lot of cards, uh, Gel and Duos, Arcana the Fool, all these cards that hide in defense mode, you can just take care of them with this card. This card has won me so many games, I can't even tell you guys. This card is a staple in like every deck, I think. I think every deck should run uh, Butterfly Assassin. Uh, and then the one Stardust for the Starlight Road. And of course, the Panda Man token for Gores. So that is it, you guys. Mystery solved. That is my Dino Rabbit deck for September 2012. The list is pretty standard. I think a lot of people might have expected me to throw in some crazy shit like car car Ds or save zones or stuff like that. I'm still te in my testing phase, but I feel that basic Dino Rabbit is really the way to go. When you have your rabbits, your tour guides, you've been able to make up for the lost tour guide. Most people would say run a Gold Sark. I've tried Gold Sark. I don't like it as much. I had cut an MST for it, and I kind of regretted it because I got the rabbit to hand, but then it was like the back row could be a problem. And the back row ended up being a solemn warning, so I took a lost that game because of that so I felt that the main deck is pretty solid the monsters are pretty solid you don't have to run BLS if you don't want to I suggest it though I think BLS is a great card the cards I highly suggest you run are uh, Grand Mole um, I encourage Thunder King. I think Thunder King is amazing again. Thunder King's always been amazing, but I think now is going to be its time to shine again. I like the main deck Snowman Eater. Uh, a lot of my teammates are doing Snowman Eater in their main decks because this card can just answer a lot of pesky monsters and it's not as expected as much usually when they set you think they're sending a sangin same rules apply for night assailant it's a tour guide target it's not expected it's not a dead draw compared to tour bus so the card single-handedly uh, pays for itself uh, in its uh, abilities 
I'm not running Sukiyomi. I do not like Sukiyomi in Dino Rabbit. Some people do try it. I don't like it because I don't like wasting my summon on a spirit monster that'll just return to my hand. And if it gets Veilard, it ends up getting smacked anyway. So to be honest, I don't think the card is that great. I might try it a little later, see if I can come up with some combos with it. But really, it's not needed. No card in Dino Rabbit really needs to be flipped down except maybe the Snowman and maybe the Night Assailant. But like I explained with Torrential, situations like that don't really happen. And I feel that... Being standard with your deck is the best way to go because you will be able to get the most uh, bang for your buck with this deck. You summon Thunder King turn one, you're in a winning position. You summon Grand Mole later in the game to secure the lock, you win. A lot of these cards win the game for you by their own effects. They don't even have to attack. They lock your opponent down and your opponent will eventually not be able to come back from a laggy or Dolka with Grand Mole or Thunder King on the field. So I feel that these cards are just very efficient. But let me know what you guys think. You know, thumbs up the video. 200 plus likes would be great. Thank you guys once again for helping me reach this pinnacle of 5,000 subscribers. It really means a lot to me. And now I'm just going to shoot for 10,000 and beyond. Um, like I said, it hasn't even been a year. So this is just an amazing feeling to accomplish all this on YouTube in such a short period of time. I could not do it with all, without all the channels that have helped me along the way and all your guys' support. I don't always upload the best content but when I upload a good video I'm glad to see the numbers it pulls in and I'm glad that people have stayed subscribed to me since the very beginning so thank you guys for this thank you for your support your love your motivation and I will just continue to bring you bring you guys the best content that I can possible so that's all I got to say you guys hope you guys enjoyed Dino Rabbit hope this proves that Dino Rabbit isn't dead so thumbs up the video everyone have a good day and thank you for watching